Hey guys, it's Alexis and Lillian here. And today we are going to talk to you about everything you've always wanted to know about lesbians. Well, not everything. <laughs> and we don't mean lesbians, we mean like girls who like girls, whatever orientation queer we might identify as. Uh, so I find that queer girls get a lot of questions. So we wanted to make a video to answer some of those. One of the questions that gets brought up, you're sitting at a table with your friends, the wine comes out, a few glasses later it's like, okay, so like, how do two girls have sex? Oh my god. So I always say to that, use your imagination. I always say, what do you do in the bedroom when you're alone and you get horny? Just do that on another girl. That's the way to say it. <laughs> I mean, you might not have a penis, but you have the whole rest of your body. Like you can yeah. use your hands, you can use your mouth, you can use to <laughs> you can use toys, but not everyone does. Uh, so there's lots of options. Fruit. Fruit. Mm. <laughs> Next question: Is scissoring a thing? What is scissoring? So we, should we first explain it? Me? Hey! Cheating on me? <laughs> so basically this is scissoring. Girls, their legs. Um, they... But they, it's usually not really like that, it's like... Like this. Some people are like, oh yeah, I love scissoring. And others are like, tried oh. it, it doesn't work. I feel like it depends, it can work, so it's not a myth. Um, but it depends a lot on body type and how your body is aligned and getting the right angle and there can be a lot of work kind of. Yeah. <laughs> so sometimes like, okay, let's just do something else instead. But some people really like it. Yeah. Some people just want to try it and try something new, so why not? So scissoring is a thing, but more of a, one of the side options that you can add every now and then. Who is the man in your relationship? First off, why does there have to be a man? That's whole, why we're in a relationship with a woman. The whole point is that there is no man. Yeah. The stereotype is obviously that it's like a butch and a femme in a lesbian relationship. It doesn't have to be like that. I feel like with Alexis and I, people usually assume it's me because I wouldn't say I'm butch, but I'm maybe more androgynous. I have short hair. I'm taller. I can maybe be... I'm older. I can maybe be a little more like taking charge <laughs> she wishes i mean do you think that i am the man in the relationship no i find a lot of uh, people ask all right so if you don't like dick then why are you having sex with something shaped like a dick or that looks like a dick hmm. i don't see it as something that's shaped like a dick or a penis i see it something shaped like the inside of my vagina that feels great and it <laughs> pleasures me. Next question. Is it easier to be with a woman? Hmm. I feel like this question kind of gets assumed sometimes like straight girls are upset when their boyfriend breaks up with them they're like all men are assholes and then they kind of come to me like I should just do it like you and be with a woman it would be so much easier because all men are assholes. So but is it easier to be with a woman? I feel like it can be Maybe a little bit more dramatic to be with a woman. Yeah. Like, you gotta keep that in mind, too. Mm -hmm. If there's two girls, there's a lot of emotion. Not saying that guys don't have emotions, but... Let's just say with girls, there's a lot of talking sometimes about the littlest things. And it can be nice. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it also creates a good sense of connection. But sometimes it's like, okay, like, do we really need to be discussing this for three hours? Like, everything's fine. Yeah. That being said, next question. Are you into me? Of course I am. This one goes out to all the straight girls out there. There's this sort of like curiosity, but also maybe sometimes even like a threat. Being like, okay, so you like girls, so sort of always thinking like, are you into me? Are you attracted to me? Which can be pretty annoying. <laughs> I find that it's just like straight couples or straight people it's like are you into every guy you see or bi people yeah are, is a bi person attracted to, to everyone. everyone on the planet no okay another question i feel that we get is a responsible question 
Straight sex, it's condoms, what do girls use? A.K.A. our dental dams. I think. Why is it called a dental dam? That feels like something you would get at a dentist. Oh, well, because it is. Really? It's from the dentist. Dental dams are originally from the dentist. But then people were like, well, you know, it's like latex or whatever. Maybe girls can use that for having protected oral sex. Hmm. But that sounds like fun to me. Does, they come in different flavors to make it a little more fun, but... I feel like people don't really use them that much, mm -hmm. um, so I mean they are a way to protect yourself. Do people really use it? I feel like no. But I'm, I'm sure, sure some yeah, do. Yeah, I'm sure some people but, do. But like I don't know, like personally my uh, queer people yeah, friends are like, oh know. I'm going to the club tonight, I have all my dental dams in my bag. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and kids, you should be protecting yourself. You With should lesbian just know sex, it's a little different. Yeah. Anyway, because it's like you can just like use your hands or whatever and then wash them Make sure not to exchange bodily fluids with someone who you don't know if they're like have something next question How do you go about dating and flirting and stuff like how do you know which girls are queer and which girls you have a chance with? One way is to go to queer slash like gay events because most likely Whoever you're talking to is going to be gay. If they're not, that's really confusing. Straight girls don't go to gay events. <laughs> Just kidding. I feel like gaydar is a thing. It's obviously some people make it a lot easier with their style and their appearance. Some people purposely dress that way, dress like gay, <laughs> so that other people know and can single them out and makes it easier. Mm -hmm. Other times, such as with this one, <laughs> it can be a little more, hmm, I don't know what's going on there, but you just sort of get a sense. You can always drop subtle hints like, oh yeah, by the way, like, my girlfriend, my ex-girlfriend, or just straight up tell them, oh yeah, like, I'm gay. Apps obviously make it so much easier. Next question. Do you, since you're in a relationship with a girl, do you share clothes? Yes. Okay, the answer is yes. I just went shopping yesterday and I was like, okay, all of these things, Maybe Alexis is gonna wear them too. Hmm. Except the ugly sweater. How about a threesome? Ah, uh, yes. It's like, just because we're in a relationship and we happen to be two females does not give you like a free pass to just come up to us and ask if you want to have a threesome. Yeah, that's not what's gonna, and like if anything your chances are, would be much higher if you got two straight girls who are just doing it for show and because they want you to find it attractive. And intruding like a potentially completely lesbian couple yeah. who like aren't even attracted to men, like meh, slim chance. Very slim. And if we would, or if in general someone would want to have a threesome, like trust me there's gonna be a long list and a very careful selection process. How do you go about the wish to have kids? I want to have kids. I know you do. She tells me every day. Um, so I feel like obviously there is the option to adopt. There is the option of having a sperm donor, either from someone you know or just a, an anonymous sperm bank. Is that what you call Shout it? Shout out to all my male friends. Personally, the ideal option that we were thinking would be nice. It is a very expensive method, but... But you gotta do what you gotta do when you wanna have little angel babies in your life. Uh, but yeah, let's explain the method. It's a form of in vitro fertilization. How would it work, Alexis? So it would work with my little eggy inside of my body, take it out, the sperm donor, dude, thanks a lot, will give us his sperm, we swoosh it around. <laughs> well, we don't swoosh it around, but the doctor does. Swish around the petri dish, and then the fertilized egg gently gets placed into Lillian's precious little body. And then the baby starts growing, and she feels the first kicks and all the amazing feelings. And maybe okay, some and also all the bad puking. feelings. <laughs> and then she gives birth to the child, which will technically be my, be my DNA with the sperm donor, but coming out of her body. So yeah, so it's a nice. Mutual nice way, connection. Yeah, I feel like it's the closest you can get in a, a same-sex relationship to having 
maybe not your DNA, but at least being able to carry the child. Mm -hmm. um, but adoption and just like in vitro fertilization into the same mother are also other great options and definitely doesn't take away that it would be any less yeah. of both of our children. Yeah, but it's like unfortunate that we can't just, the two of us, make like, a child. We would never know what a child from both of our DNAs would look like. That's so sad. We tried an app and it looked horrible, so maybe it's for the best. <laughs> Gonna choose a nice pretty man instead. All right, I think that was it from our the first part of our series of everything you've always wanted to know about queer girls. But let's open up a discussion. We know we have a lot of straight people watching as well. Um, let us know if you have some more questions. We'd love to potentially answer them in a in the next part. We'd love to hear from all the other girls who like girls out there. What are your answers to these questions? Mm -hmm. And what kind of questions do you get asked all the time? Yeah. And yeah, I'd be curious also your takes on like scissoring and dental dams and stuff <laughs> like that. Cause yeah. Also, this is the little book of yoga. You know what that means? That means what's coming soon? Not the yoga the challenge. The most anticipated event of the year, Alexis and Lillian doing the yoga challenge. So stay tuned for that. Um, thank you so much for watching. You guys are amazing. We read all of the comments. And yeah, it puts a smile on our face. Follow us on Instagram if you haven't yet. And Snapchat. We're trying to keep updated with that thing. <laughs> See you at the next one, guys. Thanks for watching. Cheers! Cheers.